Okay, one more excerpt from this important book, Serious Adverse Events and Uncensored History of AIDS, newly republished, originally published in 2006, newly republished by Chelsea Green, publish, uh, publishers, I want to say publishers, publishing house, um, <clears throat> by Celia Farber. From the same chapter, what about Africa? Uh, she is in uh, the Rakai district of Uganda. She reports, a man walked over to greet me, clasping my hand. Because I am white, he me and this was in um, sorry what what year was this? This is early aughts. Um, not I'm not financial. This is early aughts. She's um, in Africa with a few other people. A man walked over to greet me, clasping my hand. Because I am white, he immediately assumed I was there on behalf of a Western AIDS group, and that I was going to preach the importance of condom use. Holding my hand in his, he said imploringly, Madam, let me tell you something about us. We must procreate. The advice to use a condom every time in rural Uganda is clearly absurd, considering how many children they bear and how many die in infancy. Embarrassed, I assured him I was not there to preach condom use, but to ask some questions about AIDS. Terrible, he said, shaking his head. I have had two brothers and one sister die of AIDS already. I'm sorry, I said. What did they die of? Slim. AIDS. I mean, what was the cause of death? Ah, well, my brother, for instance, he had malaria, and we couldn't afford to get him treatment, so he died. So he died of untreated malaria, I said. Yes, malaria. Why did you say he died of AIDS? He shrugged. Slim. AIDS. It's a formula for everything here. When somebody dies, we call it slim. The WHO had allotted $6 million for AIDS for 1992 and 93, around the time I was there. Oh, this is earlier than I thought, sorry. All other infectious diseases combined, barring tuberculosis, received only $57,000. $6 million for AIDS, $57,000 for all other diseases combined, in a place with a lot of tropical diseases. Perhaps it is no wonder, Farber continues, that healthcare workers there have learned to call everything AIDS. What I'm going to write about uh, for my substack this week and what should be obvious from the couple of excerpts that I've read here today, uh, and what has been pointed out by others, including, for instance, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. in his, um, in his endorsement of this book, uh, are some of the similarities um, between uh, how the AIDS epidemic and crisis progressed and how consensus was apparently arrived at early and often, and uh, with which there was no dissent that would be allowed, and of course COVID. And it is um, it is a remarkable set of similarities to consider as we look forward, as we must, uh, and think about what will come next. Yeah, it's striking what you see is a game in which a player has become expert. Yeah. You see that there is a way of causing, in this case, a continent to react according to a narrative that is convenient to the incentivizer, right? And the idea, you know, we saw this with COVID, of course, where the idea was everybody who died died of COVID, which made COVID seem that much more significant and therefore caused that much more alarm, which caused that much more power to flow to those who would cause the miscategorizing. And then we saw, you know, hospitals complicit, uh, effectively paid to categorize things as COVID. Mm -hmm. So of course their natural fiscal sensibility would cause them to participate in amplifying a incorrect understanding of how common this disease was and how much it was responsible for. Again, to whom is their obligation? Right. Right? Those patients are already dead. Yeah. Who, who loses? Who loses, it might seem, to the hospital administrator uh, if we call that and that and that a COVID death or an AIDS death? If that will cause more funds to flow and isn't our job uh, to do the good and honorable work of medicine, which requires money, and isn't it okay to tell this little white lie perhaps and maybe if you compel yourself that it isn't okay to tell yourself that little white lie um, because you realize it's not a little white lie it's a lie but it's not a little white lie then you 
come to engage in self-deception sufficiently that you believe your own press and you no longer understand that you are in fact lying. First, do no harm to shareholder value. Something like that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty upsetting in the degree to which um, the parallels from prior chapters that we didn't know anything about personally uh, mirrors the horrors that we've just lived through and had to rediscover yep. in real time. Indeed. Okay, well, that was depressing. <laughs> and now we're leaving. Yes, well, <laughs> give you something to think about. Yeah. Um, seriously, though, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to write a little bit more about this for uh, Natural Selections this week, but, um, but get this book, Serious Adverse Events, An Uncensored History of AIDS. Uh, it, will, it will blow your mind. Yeah. Uh, and I, I highly recommend it. 